This video is for auctioneers who need to take care of client accounts and have visibility for your regulator on the money you've taken in from clients and the money you've paid out. What you need to do is create two different instances of Sort My Books. So I'm going to show you here what I mean. I'm going to create auctioneer client sample and I'm going to just put in my email address. You can put in your address here. I'll just put in brief line of an address and I'm going to click finish here. That's my first one, client sample. And now we also need one for your own office accounts. So auctioneer office sample. And I go through the same details there to set up that account. To toggle between the two, you click change at the top and you go click on auctioneer office sample. So that would be your standard account. So where you do a sales invoice, you put your purchase invoices and you record all your income and your expenses. So we're going to go back now to auctioneer client sample. This is the one that's a little bit different from your standard accounts. So what we need to set up here, first of all, is we need to go to accounts and bank and we're going to set up an account called client account and it's type bank. And we also then need to set up our customers. So each customer that you have, so I'm going to give them generic names. I'm going to give, for example, Sean, Sean, the house seller. So Sean has come to you and he has asked you to sell his house. And then we're also going to look at George, the landlord. So George has given you his property to rent. Now that we've set up our two types of client, let's see what happens when we receive money. So someone is interested in buying Sean's house and they've given you a 5,000 euro deposit. So you click on Sean, the house seller, you click the financial tab and you scroll down to payments to account. You put in the date that you received the money. You put in, so the type be, let's say EFT or a check and you put in the bank account. So it's gone into the client account and you can put in deposit received. You could even put in who it's from. So deposit received, click save, click OK. Now I'm going to just go over to the reports to see what reports we're going to be using to track this detail. So you click on the accountant button over on the right hand side and you choose debtor sales and lodgements and this report here age debtor version two and you can see here there's a negative balance against Sean the house seller and that's what we want to see what we're going to look at also our other report we're going to look at is our balance sheet so click on ledger reports click on balance sheet I'm going to change this to years just to make it easier to to view include subnominals at the top. I'm going to suppress zero so that we just see what we need. We're not seeing all the, the headings here and click apply. And what we can see here is we always want this to add up to zero because we've received 5,000 from one of our potential buyers of Sean's property. So we want to record that we have 5,000 euro of Sean's money. And we want to see the location of that, that is in our client account. So there should be money against Sean's account, money in the client account, and the net is zero. Next, we're going to look at what happens then the sale goes through. And what are you going to do then for paying the solicitor? So the solicitor gets their fees. So we're going to put in the money that's paid to the solicitor here. And the, here's the key thing. It's going in as a negative figure. So we're putting in the solicitor gets 1500. So we put minus 1500 in the client account and in the reference return to solicitor. And we click save on that. And then your fee, the auctioneer fee, we're going to take 
deduct that here also. Again, EFT, and again, this is a negative. So 3,500 comes from the client account, and this is agent fee to office account. And we click save on that, and we click OK. And let's go back and refresh our reports and see what happens. So if I click the refresh on here, I can see that Sean now has returned to zero, meaning you don't owe Sean any money or no, no longer holding any funds for Sean. If you click the drill down, you'll see the exact transactions. You'll see the deposit received, the agent fee to office account and the return to solicitor. And if we go to your balance sheet and we refresh that, we'll see again there that this has returned to zero. And if we click on these, any of these, we can see exactly what the transactions are. So you have full transparency then for any inspections that you get. Let's do the same exercise with George, the landlord. You've taken on George's property to rent for him. And now you've received from the tenant, you've received the deposit and the month in advance. So you click on George, the landlord, click financial and add payment. And again, you just put in the date of receipt of the money from the tenant. So let's say <clears throat> you've received 2000 a month's rent and a month's deposit. Deposit plus first month. You can put that in the reference. Click save and then click OK. And if we go back again to our age debtor report and we click refresh on it, we can see that we effectively we have a negative balance on George, the landlord, looking like we owe him money, which effectively you do. And then if we look at the balance sheet, we can see that there's a negative balance there for George, the landlord. And there is a positive balance in your client account. So your client account is where you're holding the money for George. So then let's give that money to George. So you're going to take your fee from that and you're going to pay the rest over to George. So your fee, let's say you've, you've rented out the property now and you're taking your fee of, let's say 500 euro client account, and we'll call this agent fee again to office account. And again, the key thing is to make it negative. And then you're paying the balance to your landlord. So third, we'll, we'll do that on the same day. I'm gonna do an EFT payment. And on the same day, you've paid 1500 to your landlord and to your client from the client account. And this will be transferred to landlord. But you can put in the client's name transferred to, but we'll have the client's name on the, on the balance sheet already. So you click OK on that. And again, we're going to go back and just refresh our reports. And we can see that George has gone, has his balance has gone to zero. When it's gone to zero, it means you've completed all the transactions. And you can see the deposit and first month's rent received, the agent fee for yourself, and then transferred to the landlord, and that now the balance on that is zero. And similarly, we go to your balance sheet, click refresh, and you can at any time click on here to get a full report of the client account, and on here a full account also of the transactions relating to that particular client.